You do not flip off Jesus in the private Christian school in kindergarten. No, ma'am. No. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Don't Mom Alone podcast. I'm your host, Heather McFadden. And even though there's some new music, this is still the place where I get to walk alongside you and connect you with people and resources so you know that you don't mom alone. And in this episode number 414, it is the first week of our summer of mentorship. And if you've been around the podcast a while, you know, we usually replay previous episodes. Well, this year, not only are we doing new episodes, but I have recorded a fantastic series with my friend, Cynthia Yanoff. She's the host of the Mesmerized podcast, and she and I are going to share our own mom experiences, try to mentor, and answer your questions. We've had listeners who call in and leave recordings. They will be part of this show, and we're hoping it's a good mix of help and humor. I know I need levity in the summer, and we hope you do too. So let's get right to it. Here we go. Okay, we ready? (laughs) There's a man outside with a suitcase. Oh, wait, it's a woman. (laughs) Where are you going? (laughs) Little short on the hair. Squirrel. It's like a squirrel. Should we be recording this by a window, Cynthia? Should you be facing the wall? (laughs) It's totally a squirrel, the the man woman with her suitcase. Yeah, so welcome. Yeah, so y'all don't. Do you know, Cynthia? I don't feel like anyone knows who you are. <laughs> I mean, no. Talk about being um, unseen. Welcome. Unseen. Welcome. Hospitality 101. <laughs> Your chest is all red. I haven't been in a baseball game, but I'm not embarrassed. But I just going to. You I, got burnt? Yes. Yes. Yeah. My son was, his neck was red from all the going. things. Oh, it's exciting. Uh, y'all don't know, Cynthia. <laughs> No, nobody Should I does. Say it again. Not one person. No one knows Cynthia. You'll get to know Cynthia. Mm-hmm. But I think like the reason I am being sarcastic with you is that you <laughs> throw out the sarcasm. Like the day my mom doesn't live here. She lives in Florida. Okay. She rarely visits, maybe once a year, twice a year. Uh-huh. You text me <laughs> while I'm at lunch and shopping with my mom. No, what is it? <laughs> and you say, uh, you're asking me a question. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to scroll back. This is, hold please, because I, there's a lot of text from you. Um, Got nothing but time over here. <laughs> here we go, folks. <laughs> Keep raising you te- your kids. You text me <laughs> and you say, oh, here we go. Lunch dates, please. Oh, yeah, to good lunch. With a okay. smiley face. And mm-hmm. I... Then also I'm reaching out to Audio Boom next week. All suggestions welcome. Everyone's still talking about our podcast together. And then this is the mm-hmm. kicker. Mm-hmm. And a heart is not dates, just FYI. <laughs> okay, just stop right here, everyone. I need you to know something. There is This is like information you need to know about Don't Mom Alone. I have been momming alone. No thanks to Heather McFadden. I don't even know how to say your name because you say it wrong or you're... You I, I, my husband, I don't say it the same. Okay, fine. Listen, I've been momming alone and and she... And I appreciate your platform and I don't want anyone listening. I do not want you to mom alone. But if you think that you are going to have a remedy for momming alone with Heather McFadden, <laughs> it is incorrect because... I don't I, have the solution. I need the help. I have tap back trauma. <laughs> and... <laughs> Do y'all, you, you guys know I'm talking out with the tap back, right? Tap and, back trauma feels aggressive. Well, I'm well. just saying. Okay, so you know, like, I'm literally like, hey, Heather, it's been really a hard day. And my no. kids aren't doing well. And I think my my dog ran away. No. And, and my husband's, you know, been a little distant. And I get the tap back heart. I'm like, no. wait, <laughs> Well, you can't do that. You can't heart. And when someone says like, hey, I'd like to spend some time with you. Lunch dates, please. Like exclamation mark. What? No, no. I, I, had a, I had a heart. I, I not to me, a heart is an acknowledgement. I see you. Huh. It, in my brain. But I don't know the Texas etiquette. Is this like a Texas thing that people like respond to text? No, and it's not- a decency <laughs> thing. <laughs> it's Maybe. a, hey, this girl seems to be throwing but- out a life. What's it called? A life preserver, a rope. What am I throwing <laughs> out? And uh, somebody should like jump on and help here. And it's like, ooh. An SOS. You're sending out the SOS. Thank you. Thumbs yeah. down. Thumb- no thumbs. I do not thumbs down. But here's, anyway, here's yeah. the deal. Here's the deal. Mm-hmm. It was really helpful. 
for you to acknowledge that to me because Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I started realizing how often I do it. (laughs) Not just to friends on text, but DMs. Oh, I'm not really helping grow my community if I just tap. Like they're like, oh my gosh, I love the show. This is changing my life. My marriage is better. My kids are amazing because of you. And I tap Heart. Thumbs up. I'm just going to tell you people something. It's not personal. If that happens to you on a DM, then I want you to scoot right on over to Cynthia Ganoff (laughs) and I will respond and be like, hey, I'm so glad for you. Please don't mom alone. I'm here. (laughs) Are you mesmerized by my ability to communicate with you and not just tap back? Right, right. I think that's a good idea. Good play on words in my podcast. Thanks for that. Yeah, here we go. I mean, I got you. I got you, girl. She does. Um, We're going to have fun, though. We are. Because here's the deal. We are not the same. You and I, Mm -mm. we're not the same. We don't have the same perspective on life. You told me you like to be on time to things. Mm -hmm, I do. That's weird. (laughs) It's fine. Thumbs up. Don't expect it from me. Expect me to be late. Okay. A good good amount uh, every time. And you have different kids than I do. Uh, I have four boys Mm -hmm. spaced every two years, Mm -hmm. six and a half years exactly. Wow. I just wish I would have known you when they were babies. I wouldn't have even gotten a tap back. I would have gotten like an inappropriate tap back probably. Like you, like if that existed, you had been like, peace out, girl. Overwhelmed. Yeah, I was pretty overwhelmed. But tell everybody your family crew as we head into. Well, I I do want to share that since not one person knows me apparently. No, nobody knows you. Uh Uh-uh. And we'll talk about that in a minute because I want y'all to know something about (laughs) Heather and, and, and whether or not. People know who I am and you don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Okay. So listen, I have, I'm married. I've been married like 21 years or something. And I only 21. I know. Right. We just started. And uh, really 21. Well, I was born in, oh, I mean, it was born. I was married in oh one. So it's, oh, I've years. been married longer than you. Wow. Wow. I have, I'm your mentor when it comes to marriage. <laughs> this is great. This is great. <laughs> um, okay. And so then, yeah, I have three kids. I have a daughter in college and I have a son in high school and I have a kindergartner. Yes. You heard that correctly. <laughs> so yes, a sophomore in college, a sophomore in high school and kindergarten 2.0. And that's what's going on. Yeah. And through fostering yeah. to adopt. Foster so, to adopt. And so, yeah. Big, big proponent of the fostering. Big proponent of, yeah, big proponent of doing what God calls you to do, even there when it's it hard. There and it is. so for me and my husband, that was foster care. But yeah, big proponent of doing what God calls you to do. And um, and even when it's hard and impossible and all the things, and then lives are changed because of that. And I don't even mean our adopted son. I mean ours and my kids. and um, Your my daughter mom. got into like UT because of it. Because well, that's a... She had a and pretty, her and her GPA, whatever. Well, she had pretty good. You have a pretty good college essay when you go through foster care. Yeah, for sure. So that's why we did it. Actually, actually, it was only to get her into University of Texas. Right. Which Thumbs is up. Heart. The Ivy League of Texas right now. The it's, Ivy League of impossible. Texas, something like that. It's impossible to get into. So, um, yeah, that's where I am in life. And so when I say no one knows you, uh-huh. the reality is mm-hmm. in our little community, you are a rock star because mm-hmm. I ha- go on a mm-hmm. podcast with you and suddenly all the people are like, hey, I heard you on Cynthia's podcast. <laughs> That's great. It was great. Uh, I have one too for 10 years. Mm-hmm. No, no comments about my podcast. But when I go on Cynthia's, mm-hmm. suddenly fame and fortune follow me. <laughs> Um, you're well, very, very popular with our community. See, you guys, she keeps limiting this. She's like within this and, tiny community that we and live in. And the world. I mean, we every I, country. Just FYI, y'all, my podcast isn't just a local yokel. <laughs> Apparently, it's available nationwide. There's people, there are people in Bangladesh. Stop. That have listened. Now, I'm sure they're like, who's the weirdo from Texas? But just so there it is. Anyway, Every Heather, country. thanks for like, first of all, thanks for having me on. This is so fun. It's and everyone, we're glad you're here for the ride. And it's summer and anything goes. Anything. Anything. Anything goes. And we're here. That So maybe like you can stop listening now, but don't. Anything goes. And we're going to say anything goes with us right now, except tap backs because I have trauma. <laughs> but we are going to, I wonder if we should have put, you know how you put like a little warning if something might be like oh, a, a yeah, like if a anybody warning. else has like tap If you've back, experienced tap back trauma. Then don't listen to this don't one. Listen to this. I feel like we're irresponsible with that. <laughs> like a trigger warning. Yes. Trigger warning. And so that's yeah. what we're going to do. We are going to, yeah, we're going to have fun and you're sweet to have me on and we're going to answer some questions. Yeah. And- yeah. 
I'm definitely going to heart and tap back the Blissy Silk Pillowcase. Y'all, I have purchased silk pillowcases for my mom, my sister, my nieces. Finally, I have my own Blissy Pillowcase. I adore it. My evening begins before my head even hits the pillow when I use the Blissy Sleep Spray. It has a great blend of lavender and eucalyptus. Bruce even asked me to spray it on his pillow. And then... Oh my goodness. Y'all know the best part of the pillow is the underside where it's nice and cool. Well, imagine that's just your whole pillow. That is the coolness of this silk. It does not overheat. It's a natural fiber. Unlike satin, which is more like a synthetic polyester, silk is breathable, moisture wicking, gentle, and fantastic for your hair and your skin. Less frizz, less tangles, less breakage. I can go to bed and know that I'm going to wake up and my skin is going to be healthier, not dry and flaky, and my hair will be shinier. Also, a little science behind that is when you sleep on a cotton pillow, it absorbs the moisture out of your skincare products and out of your hair, and so it's drying it out. I also love that the Blissy pillowcases are made out of 100% mulberry silk, which is naturally hyperallergenic. So you can sleep comfortably without itching or rashes, It's also really high quality, so that's machine washable and durable. Like I said before, they make great gifts. If you want to go check it out, I love taking mine on trips. It helps me sleep when I get to my location because there's the familiarity of the pillow. I can take my spray. I can take my little Blissy sleep mask. The Blissy silk pillowcases are the best ones on the market, and they have tons of different prints and colors. I chose pink. They make those great gifts. There's an option for literally anyone. Men love them too. They have over 1.5 million raving fans. You could be the next. Try now risk-free for 60 nights at blissy.com forward slash DMA and get an additional 30% off. That's B-L-I-S-S-Y.com slash DMA. Use the code DMA to get an additional 30% off. You'll wake up feeling better than ever. And let's do it. Here's first yeah, one. Let's go. Okay. Here it is. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited for this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I have a seven-year-old little girl who is a little bit of a liar face, and I'm not real sure what to do. (laughs) I need some suggestions on how to train her up in the way she should go. I'm trying to think of all the things. She has a really great home life. Her dad is present. All Christian school, all the things. She's very loved, but for whatever reason, she is just a little liar face right now. So... Any suggestions, guidance would be so much appreciated. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, bye. We love this one. A we little liar face. One. I mean, we want to be friends with her. Totally. I You would tap back her to death. <laughs> like, seriously want to be friends with her. And I'm going to just say something. This is how you know whoever this friend is. This is our people because... And, and I think she answers her own question. Like, you are doing it right. And here's how I know. Because you literally taped a question you called your kid a liar face which means you see that your kid isn't perfect and I like want to be like hats off sister because I don't know if y'all like have been around the parenting world forever like (laughs) the rest of us but then there's people like my kid would never do that I'm like huh Huh. that's interesting because there's not there's just honestly not one thing really I can think of that'd be like my kid would never do that I don't know you're setting you're setting them up to do it if you say they're never it's like having a birth plan Mm -hmm. and you end up with a cesarean yes and so i'm giving you that this really subtle motion to go to this other document (laughs) well (laughs) that we're looking can i give my thoughts on the liar no uh -uh. okay we're off no yes by all means i didn't even give a thought other than yes go girl for acknowledging it that i think that is absolutely true and i think that everyone who's listening who has a liar pants or face i called it liar pants when i told you about it and i put that (laughs) liar face it's relatable Because I was that liar. This is what I want to encourage people. Mm -hmm. If you have a liar right now, Heather McFadden often lied as a child. And here's why I would do it. Okay, tell us. Because I cared a lot about what people thought. Mm. And so to preserve my reputation, Mm -hmm. to keep up the performance, Mm -hmm. to make sure I didn't get in trouble, my little brother was the one who had all the spanking spoons broken on his behind, I avoided all of the consequences by lying. Mm -hmm. I even had a child this week who, I won't go into what he did, but he told the truth to his teacher and to us. 
and we're having this conversation with him, he's like, I should have lied. Right? Yeah. And I, I said, that. you know what? I am so sorry that you're feeling that way. We are very thankful that you told the truth. We're trying to get to you maybe not doing this choice again. But we will tell you that actually we're going to lighten up the consequence a little bit because you did tell the truth. And that yes. is valuable to us. That's so good. Reward truth. Reward truth. But it's like you get to me sometimes when moms say, oh, my kids lie all the time. I'm like, what? kind of pressure are they under personally mm -hmm. it may be that you parented them exactly the same mm -hmm. it's not a parenting technique but that child is giving themselves a lot of pressure to perform mm -hmm. in this environment whether whatever you're doing or not and so maybe like get curious about the behavior mm -hmm. instead of it's wrong they should stop like Yanoffs don't lie McFadians don't lie like some sort of right right <laughs> like value statement it's like well, but they are, so let's get curious about the why for that child. Yeah. That's think, my only thoughts. I think that's really, I think that's, I think it's really good. Get curious. I mean, that answer is kind of most. Like most things. behavior issues, yeah. right? Like what's behind that? I think that most kids want approval and affection. Uh -huh. I mean, I have a few that I wonder most days, like, do you care? <laughs> but in general, they want to be approved of, so they're doing something yeah. unsavory why right what goal is it getting what like for them it's accomplishing something right right and it caught it caught my ear when you said when when our listener said or said something to the effect of private schools a christian yeah. home yeah yeah, parents, yeah. dad's like, president like yeah. i just reminder like to myself and all of us like all those things that we can do don't at the end of the day take away original sin like our no. kids are still <laughs> gonna get it wrong and so yeah. um someone i still choose self yeah. Over. And self-preservation mm -hmm. and whatever that is. And so I would just say this. Um, I remember someone told me early on in my parenting, like you can spend every day, all day disciplining these people, especially when they're <laughs> young. But I mean, like you, yeah. that can just be like your entire day. Yeah. And I remember at one point with my oldest, who's super strong willed, I'm like, I think I'm going to make her, I feel like I'm making her mean because I'm on her all the time. Mm -hmm. And I remember someone told me, and I thought this was good advice. They said, when you discipline, discipline character, not personality. Mm. And so certain things your kids are going to do are just their personality. They're slow. They never can find their shoes. Maybe their room's a little bit messy. Maybe they talk too much. Like don't discipline the things yeah. that are personality, yeah. but character. And so maybe what, they're a performer. Maybe they're an achiever yes. and they care about the, yes. what they look like to other people. And they're too vain or they're too whatever the things like yeah. some of those things like let those go. And so then when you come in on the character things in which this is what my husband and I have tried to do, Mike, we've tried to be like, we're going to let as much as it go as we can let go. And we are going to give the easy yeses, especially when they get older, easy yeses. Okay. But then if it is a character issue, then we're going to come down like the hammer. And yeah. so that for us, and so when we have come in hard on some things, they know because we don't on most of the other stuff. We're like, yeah. oh, that's going to drive me nuts, but I'm not going to address it. And so as I'm just thinking about this is that is like lying is a character issue, but at seven. I know. I just. You got time. You're good. You I got have a seven time. And I yeah. feel like too, there were certain seasons of development. I just remember my boys would hit a phase and I was like, oh, here's the lying phase. They're trying it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See what they're see what they seeing get. how it works. And it's just like reinforcing the character, like, you know what? Telling the truth is a better route. Yeah. We value telling the truth. But if you come down super hard, like in a punitive way, I think it reinforces the lying sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like too Maybe. much heavy handed on like don't lie, don't lie, don't lie. In some ways, I feel like I don't know. Well, here's the thing, too. I, I, again, I'm still in this, and you would agree with this. Like, we don't have this all figured out. I agree. You guys do not have it all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. No. Yeah, I agree 100%. Like, I don't know that my theories all are going to work out Me yet. Neither. Me neither. I don't have adults yet. Well, and the other thing is this is also just just figure out what they're lying about too. And to mm. me, a lying is wrong. Wrong is wrong. Like we're gonna yeah. we're gonna live with biblical standards. Yes. That being said, they're seven, and so their biblical standards are pretty 
they're still going to be. Yeah. Yeah. And so what are they lying about? Like if we're lying about like whether or not I put my shoes back in the shoe basket, like, okay, like maybe call them out, but let's move on. I mean, if, uh, if I don't know how big of a crime, I mean, if you're at seven <laughs> and they're sneaking out at night and uh, meeting up with whoever, <laughs> something sinister, then maybe we need to go a little deeper, but yeah. they're seven. So anyway, I don't know. Bigger. You're, you're dealing with se- seven year old issues. Yeah. Yeah, in a seven-year-old seven year old. way. Yeah. You have a seven-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I'm sure he's, <laughs> I listen to that question. I'm like, I'm sure he is lying to me. What have I missed? So. <laughs> yeah, I think you said, I'm too busy to notice if he's lying. I Totally too busy to, yeah. And the thing There's is- There's a gift in that. I've heard that mm-hmm. the older you are, oh, it's when a you have game. younger kids, like you recognize what's important, what's not. Totally. You know, like I wish I just feel sorry for my first one. I mean, I think anybody <laughs> listening is like poor first child, like your first one, like I overparented that kid to death. And now with the third one, do I need to step up my game? Yes, Heather, I need to step up my game. <laughs> the but teachers know, are calling, right? The <laughs> teachers are like, how come he was at a baseball game till 11 o'clock on Tuesday night before we did our star testing? I'm like, oh, my oh, bad. Oh, really? Um, you know, it was those, the night before testing. Well, yeah, but he's in kinder. So it's not real testing, but carnal. <laughs> Which is the square. Right. What right. color's red. Right. But here's the, and it's the second time through kinder. So I hope we got it this round. I don't know. But here's the other thing. Here's the other thing I would say to my mom always told me this. And I just would like to like, give you a little freedom, everyone. My yeah. mom said, if it's not going to matter in six months or a year, then don't make it matter too much today. Yeah. And I know it's easy to be like, well, this kid's going to be like a serial liar. Maybe, but probably not. And yeah. so this probably is a phase and everything, especially when they're like pre- like 13, I feel like pre like whatever, mid teenage, like all of it's a stage. And so I, if it's not going to matter, it's not going to be a huge deal in six months or a year, which this probably is not going to be, then don't make it a huge deal today. And I try to live by that. My mom's always said that. And I'm like, okay, like seriously, my kid got, you know, a C minus and didn't study on whatever. Is this, am I going to care in a year? No. So I'm going to try to care less right now. And so it's a good rule of thumb for me. Good perspective. Yeah. It is interesting to think back to times when like a teacher called me about a situation Mm -hmm. with a kid in like first or second grade. And now I'm seeing that (laughs) that same thing pop up as a teen. And I'm kind of like, is it all of us? And we have a vice or a a sin focus. You know how like Mm -hmm. we – are hitting up against it. We're getting a little better, but we keep hitting up against it and we need the Holy Spirit in our life. It's like, how can we direct them to say, yeah, that's not a great choice. That's not a good coping mechanism for whatever you're trying to accomplish. And also point them and be like, and you need the Holy Spirit to help you. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to over-spiritualize with little like kid stuff, but at the same time, there's no junior Holy Spirit. Sure. So the same sure. massive creator God is mm-hmm. available and present to help them, not if they make that same choice in the future, but when. when. Yeah. yeah. Cynthia and I are talking about working with kids when they're lying. And one thing that I feel like maybe deception, but it's the good kind, is using shapewear. Okay, let's talk about it. I am a big fan lately of... When I'm wearing dresses, I I love dresses in the summer. And I love now wearing shapewear shorts underneath, but I do not want the tight ones. I don't want to be squeezed to death. I don't want to have to worry about it's time to go to the bathroom. And ladies, I've had four children, okay? We know that the time, I don't have a lot of time, okay? So I don't need to be tugging with the shapewear, having a whole battle in the bathroom to get it off. Well, with Honey Love... Their superpower shorts are amazing. They have a targeted compression technology. It distinguishes between areas I want support and areas I don't need to be squeezed to death. They have a signature X that targets and sculpts my midsection without squeezing out all my natural curves that I like. It works with my body, not against it. And it smooths it out. So the dress looks amazing on me. I don't have to worry about it rolling down, which is another thing. Like if it's loose, then it all rolls down. It has flexible boning. It's hidden. It also, uh, they have body suits. They have great like support for your bust. They also sell bras and tanks that don't have underwire. So they are the professionals in knowing what's comfortable, providing support, and working with you. Now, if you uh, don't know, they even have in their shapewear, 100% cotton gusset, so you can skip the extra undies. Plus, it has a convenient opening in the panty area. 
for super easy bathroom use. No costume change required. I love that. Uh, So if you want to go check it out, treat yourself to the best shapewear on the market and save 20% off, go to honeylove.com slash DMA. Make sure you use our unique code because then they know you listen to the show and it's really great. Use our exclusive link, get 20% off honeylove.com forward slash DMA. Now, Cynthia and I are talking about parenting because we care so much and we know you do too. And we're as we're making light of it, we also really are concerned about our kids' future and what we're doing to help set them up for the best success, not just in what kind of adults they turn out to be, but I know some of us are really concerned about their financial well-being and making sure we give them everything they need to grow and thrive now and in the future. And what I love is connecting y'all with term life insurance from Fabric by Gerber Life. You will use them and help protect your family so their future is secure no matter what happens because Fabric was designed by parents for parents to help you get high quality, surprisingly affordable term life insurance policies in less than 10 minutes. Fabric's new lower prices could mean sp- potentially significant savings over other insurance providers with great quality policies like a million dollars in coverage for less than a dollar a day. Now, I know it's one of those things on our to-do list that we just avoid because life insurance can have a bad rap for being complicated, but Fabric makes it easy to apply with their seamless digital experience. It is all online and on your time. If you need support, they have a team of licensed insurance agents to answer your questions. It takes less than 10 minutes to apply, see your quote, and then personalize your quote to fit your family's needs. You could be offered coverage instantly with no health exam required. They have partnered with Gerber Life, trusted by millions of families like yours for over 50 years and have over 1,600 five-star reviews on trustpilot.com. Fabric also has a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can cancel any time. Protect your family today with Fabric by Gerber Life. Get your personalized quote in seconds at meetfabric.com slash DMA. That's meetfabric.com slash DMA. And meet is spelled M-E-E-T, fabric.com slash DMA. Policies are issued by Western Southern Life Assurance Company. Not available in certain states. Prices subject to underwriting and health questions. That's Anything, any other that's thoughts a, on that? Well, I would say one other. This is a general general thought from um, a mom who's parented a really long time and, and has a small kid again. But here's a general thought. And that is, is when your kids are doing things, whether it's lying, whatever the things are, I would just encourage us all. I'm telling myself this through the summer is like we, we can't ourselves we can't be defined by the successes and failures of our kids. Like mm. we just need to be really careful about that. And I think lying would be one of those things. I think there's a lot of things our kids do. Biting. By, oh. I remember oh, my biting. oldest almost got kicked out of mm-hmm. Mother's Day Out, which mm-hmm. at the time I was pregnant or then had a newborn in that year. And I was like, you cannot kick him out of Mother's Day Out. I will not survive. Yeah. To put a pacifier in his mouth. I don't care if he's two mm-hmm. years old. Keep it in his mouth. He will not bite if there is something already in his mouth. Right. <laughs> because right. it felt like the scarlet letter of preschool. You would much rather have your kid. You get the note home. Be bitten. He, Is that he the, bit. Like, yeah. He broke the skin. Oh, no, not the skin. Not the skin. And we can't tell you <laughs> and we can't, who it was. We can't tell, and, well, if you were the recipient of the biter, I'm sure that's hard too. But like to be the parent of the biter I'm feels like. I'm on both like, sides of it. Yeah. Which is worse. Oh, I would much rather my kid be bitten than to be the biter for sure. But I'm laid back that way. I'm like, oh, well. Life well, will okay. So if you're the parent of the kid who's been bitten, can you just have a little empathy Yeah. for the mom of the biter? Because she's feeling like her whole world has ended. Because that feels like yeah. a failure mm-hmm. at two years old. You're talking about success or failures as they keep going. They didn't make the team. or right. I mean, you, you were talking about the baseball. The one thing I was thinking was, man. I failed because my son tried out for that team as a freshman, didn't make the team. Mm -hmm. And what if I had given him opportunities to play in sixth and seventh and eighth grade so he'd had enough skills, so he'd made the team, and then he could have been a part of this state championship. That's the failure I felt just within the last 24 hours. Isn't that the craziest thing? Like, you guys, we will take anything and pile it right (laughs) on top of ourselves. As if we are the cause of the – not to mention that he was just the lead in a play and did awesome. He was 
awesome. Well, like, like, mean, like we're going to talk about that, get in that we'll talk another it, episode. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like we don't see the wins when we can grab the wins, but we take the failures and we like beat ourselves up. For sure. I wish you would have texted me that you were struggling with that with the state championship. And oh, then well, I, I wasn't struggling. It was like a pass. You know, there's passing thoughts. Well, I would have time. tapped back like a broken heart if that existed. Stop. I would have That's like what we totally need. Come Apple, in. if you're listening, we need a broken heart <laughs> tap back. Because <correct? laughs> the only option is uh, thumbs down. And I don't know. Well, need that. yeah. And and so let me just let me just tie that with a little bow and tell you that my son, I was teaching a Bible study for our little Christian private school for all the moms. And my son was at my uh, my now in high school son. He was literally in the cafeteria early because I drop off early because I was teaching all these moms and maybe it's one of the first Bible studies I taught. So I was feeling like I really? went, a yeah. lot of moms came. I got great feedback yeah. and I was like, uh-huh, I was like a little puffed up. Don't People get- knew who you were. D- I mean, somebody did like, uh, the, I don't know, <laughs> the nine people who came. In it my mind, amazing. it's like 700, but yeah. it could have been nine. And okay. I get in the Show car the and like the school had called and I call my son's teacher, kindergarten. He was flipping off people in the cafeteria. I'm like, what? What? We're not flippers. And so I'm like, the what? Yanoffs are not flippers. We are not flippers. No, thank you, Brett Yanoff. And so I, uh, so she tells me, she's like, well, and she's kind of laughing. She's like, it's not funny, but he was flipping off towards the ceiling. And one of his friends um, thought he was flipping off Jesus. <laughs> now, Heather, I'm going to tell you something. Like flipping off Jesus, <laughs> that's no good. That is no good anywhere. But you do not flip off Jesus in the private Christian school in kindergarten. No, ma'am. No. No, ma'am. The disres- did he, what did he have to do? Well, I don't, I don't know. What nothing. was the concept? No. Did you just laugh? No, I didn't laugh. I cried. Literally, I cried. And I was like, well, this is the beginning and the end for this kid. It was horrible. But I'm going to tell you something about that. Like now looking back on these things, I'm sure that my now kindergartner all these years later is probably flipping off someone. I don't even know it. But I will say this, like this whole idea of being defined by successes and failures. Like in my mind, what's going through my mind is one, like, where did he learn that? Yeah. But what do people think? I just taught this Bible study. Like, should I call the teacher back? Should I get the assistant in? Should I call like the principals? Maybe the head of school. Maybe everyone needs to meet and I can say, he's troubled. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know what happened to him, but that is not from me. And then I had to step back and be like, okay, like, listen, if I'm going to parent from a place of being my identity being based in the success mm. and failures of my kids, it's going to get real sticky. And I'm going to take it a step further and say, if you're going to parent from a place of the success and failures of your kids, that is a burden your kids don't need to carry. No. If your reputation gets pulled into this and your identity, that is, those are, there's no child with shoulders strong enough to carry that. And so I've learned that the hard way to step on out, back on out of that they are free-willed individuals. They will make decisions. They will lie our pants or lie our face or whatever. <laughs> They're going to do stuff and listen. It will. It, they will blow your mind as they get older, some of the things. And you know what? Like, that's why we need Jesus. And our own thing. Yeah. If you're a person who needs that in your life, mm-hmm. like, I'm an, I like to achieve things. I like to get things done Same. that aren't undone. We have our own podcasts. We're doing it right now. Yeah. You had a Bible study. You were doing your thing. And it's like... Of course, the enemy would come in and try Mm -hmm. to disrupt you when you just were feeling good about using your gifts with these women and ministering because he saw the future of Cynthia Yanoff and how she was going to be on the Don't Mom Alone podcast. Seriously. (laughs) Thumbs up. And he was going to thumbs up. He was going (laughs) to disrupt that amazing plan by discouraging you and saying, I shouldn't sign up for the Bible studies anymore. I shouldn't have my son away from me because... Look what happens. Right. Well, and I it, need to spend more time with him so that he doesn't flip off Jesus. Right. It's because I have other interests that he's yeah. flipping off Jesus. No. And we I'm, blame all the things. Oh, of course. It's I think I can't remember, but I think I didn't just tap back this mom. Maybe it was another mom talking to me about lying on my DMs. I leave voice messages to people. Stop it. I do. Stop it. On don't. Instagram, well, don't. I leave voice messages. And well, I don't. think she was saying that they were in a military family. And I was talking to her and I was like sometimes our kids are going to have success and failures Mm -hmm. period the end for sure no matter the environment no matter the wiring but we sometimes blame all those things Mm -hmm. maybe I should have had them held back for kindergarten sure maybe if my husband wasn't working all the time maybe if I didn't have to work outside the home maybe if then we wouldn't have had this problem like news alert all kids are going to have problems and you're going to try to find something and do those things contribute? Do mm-hmm. some circumstances make parenting harder? Yes. But like take a step back and recognize it's just hard. 
It is. And one other thing, who gets to determine you guys, what is yeah, a success and what's right? a failure? And so I'm just going to say that too. Like, what is a success and what's a failure? Because the world is going to call a success something that's measurable. And so I can measure that my kid was on that state championship team, or I can measure that a kid got in a certain school, or I can measure whatever those things are. But the, especially if you've sent a kid to college recently, like seriously, you guys, mm. the expectation of what success is, I'm air quoting it, you know, that you're good in every, every, every subject, every one of them. Okay. You got to be good in every subject and you've got to be like maybe athletic, play the French horn, speak a second language and you volunteer yeah. like all the things. And I'm like, seriously, like, start a nonprofit, have yeah, your own business. Be an I was none of those things. Like I was the most, <laughs> my parents were so comfortable in my mediocrity. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and I'm okay. I think, I mean, nobody knows who I am, not one person yeah. and I get tap backed, but I'm okay. You guys, and but, but you're what secure I, in who I'm you secure are. in that. But what I would really want to say is this, is that some of the most God honoring things your kids will do at any given time will be things that are not measurable. And mm. they will be the times when your kid is nice to someone in the cafeteria. And they are the times when your kid walks away from a conversation that is not cool about their friend. And some of those things will never get an Instagram post and they will never be measurable, but they are the most significant thing and God honoring thing that they will do in a given day. And that's not measurable, but that matters. And so it, we got to get out of the box of I'm going to be identified with successes and failures because you know what? Yeah, maybe, maybe your kid didn't make the team or they lied or whatever the things are, but there's 20 things that the Lord knows that they're getting right most likely. And so we just got to live by yeah. the Lord's standard success and failure. And we're going to let the rest of it roll. Well, and I always go back to, I bet Jesus looked like a real failure hanging on the cross. Truth. Truth. And it was the redemption of all of our souls. So we Oof. don't know what a failure mm -hmm. is actually going to lead our kids to as far as some opportunity or just God's redemptive plan. We don't know the ripple effects. So to lean in even to what looks like a failure to everybody else yeah. to trust that God is bigger than that. So, mm -hmm. Man, I think we've got truth and good stuff in here. Like fun. What do you think? I think we're fun. I think we're fun. And we've really helped. Don't you think we've really helped people? I don't know, people you helped. Hey, listen, um, listen, if I would give this an exclamation mark if I was tap backing hey, this episode. Give us your exclamation point. Uh, and you know what? Maybe we'll do an Instagram post and see what people think about Let's their own tap back trauma. If you have tap back trauma, yeah. <laughs> Please and, dial one eight hundred. And if, if if you feel like T A P B A C K, <laughs> there's a phone number if you're, for you. If you're momming alone because of Heather oh Daddy, I have a support stars. group. It's um, at Cynthia Yanoff support group. Thank Not you. alone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do y'all think? Are you in? Are you in for the summer? We're covering so many different topics, and I can't wait to share them with you. Be back here next week. Let me pray for us and this topic of. Um, releasing our kids from the burden that we often put on them. Lord, we know, we say it, I've said it, you're the essential one. And I pray that we really would surrender the outcome of our kids to you, to trust the process. I thank you, Lord, for the ways you've even, even shown me lately of how you are working behind the scenes for my kids and for their hearts and for their minds and for their souls. And I can trust you in that. I pray that I would walk hand in hand with you each moment to get guidance from you, to know what words to say, to know what's a yes and what's a no in our family's life. I can ask the Holy Spirit to empower me to handle situations. I pray, Lord, that we would turn to you when um, life feels overwhelming, when behavior is hard, and when we're discouraged. And I pray, Lord, that the enemy would have no place in discouraging the mom that is listening today. And Jesus' name, amen. Okay, y'all, uh, if you need discussion questions for this episode, if you want to get together with some girlfriends and say, hey, there's a fun episode, go listen to it. We'll get together. We'll talk about it. So we call those podcast clubs, like a book club, but with the podcast instead of reading a book. We do podcast clubs year round. We have a link. If you go to heathermcfadion.com forward slash join, you go there, you put in your email, you'll get a couple emails and then it'll connect you with our Facebook group where I put discussion questions for every week of the podcast. But during the summer of mentorship, we do put the questions in the show notes to make it even more accessible. But if you want some support, you want to make your podcast club a little more official, do go to that heathermcfadion.com forward slash join 
And you'll also get a guide on how to lead a podcast club, how to have some guidelines. Sometimes discussions can go off the rails with moms. I don't know if you've experienced that, but it can happen. We have lots of, um, it's lots of feelings associated with our motherhood. You know what I mean? Anyway, go check that out if you want more support. But if you just want to gather some friends and have some questions and have good conversations like uh, Cynthia and I just did, then go look in the show notes for those questions. All right. I will see you back here next week with more from Cynthia and me. Adios. Bye.